this video is sponsored by world of tanks you guys have to understand any single game that allows me to put a georgian flag on a tank and shoot other europeans is a phenomenal game i want to thank wargaming for sponsoring this video and making this game because the gameplay is like and then it's poof, poof, poof. <laughs> world of tanks also has a thriving community 100 million to be exact and you probably know someone in real life that plays this game and the best thing i can tell you is that this game is absolutely free and to get this game you can click the link in the description to download it and use the code tankmania to get excelsior a tier 5 tank 250,000 credits seven days premium access and three rental tanks for 10 battles each which are tiger 131 cromwell b and T3485M. These benefits are only available to new players. Thank you Wargaming for the sponsor. I really like you. I think we should see each other again. These fitness YouTubers are talking about the same exact thing over and over again, expecting things to change. I used to be very overweight, but lost a lot of fat and gained muscle by not following what these people tell you. I will explain how fitness YouTubers lie to you so you buy their programs and give you a guide on how to actually make changes in your body. The thing is, I'm clearly not a fitness YouTuber, but I have to make a video about this because there is so much bullshit in the fitness industry, it's absolutely insane. And by bullshit, I not only mean lies, but just a lot of information where people can get lost in and that information barely ever helps anyone. For example, let's take losing weight, right? I am not a fitness model, but I have a lot of experience with losing weight. And the thing is, none of what these fitness people have said has ever helped me. Hey guys, I am a fitness YouTuber. I will teach you how to lose weight. So to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. You go this website, calculate your calories. You subtract 500 calories to lose a pound of fat for a week this is so dumb telling a person they need to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight is like telling someone they need to increase their income to get rich like no fucking shit bro the problem comes in how you do that how do you stay under a certain amount of calories a day i'll tell you that later but i also want to touch on the point of how these people also lie to you and make you more unhealthy by telling you you can eat pizza and still lose weight yeah you can technically but you're forgetting the fact that you're a fucking human you are not a math robot piece of shit who can just okay i will eat one slice of pizza that is 300 calories and i will have more left shut up you chat gpd sounding ass robot it would work if you only ate one slice but here's the thing people don't only eat one slice because they're not robots and they continue eating because pizza is so addictive it's very hard to stop at one slice why do you think people binge eat pizza and chips yet you're still to meet a person who binge eats eggs and chicken breast i used to be so fat and kept hearing this advice over and over again by these youtubers and you start to lose hope and plus you get like a billion different ideas on how to lose weight and different information keto paleo carnivore diet and by the end you're stuck looking like this not knowing what to do so you say fuck it get your cola and donuts and just eat that shit also the fact that these people tell you that you can only lose a pound of fat a week is just absolutely demotivating and literally false. If you are overweight, you are going to be losing way more fat than one pound a week. There have been weeks where I've literally lost six to seven pounds because of losing water weight combined with actual fat and I got stronger in the gym. Again, I'm not a fitness YouTuber. I'm just tired of these people saying the same thing over and over again. Calorie tracking exists, but I really don't like counting calories because when I'm outside eating with my girlfriend i don't want to bring a food scale out of my pocket to weigh out the khachap uri i'm eating and then put it in my fitness pal okay i just don't feel like doing that though like that's the thing <laughs> and the good thing is you'll never have to because most of my weight loss was done just raw dogging life and not counting calories and i will teach you exactly how let's just start off by saying that fitness youtubers telling people they can only lose a pound of fat per week no matter how hard they try is discouraging and false i don't know where you guys got that information from but me personally and all my friends have lost way more fat than a pound in a week especially when you are very heavy it's way easier to lose fat when you're very heavy than when you are just average weight so this overweight person would be like oh man i'm 300 pounds to be normal weight i would need to diet for 130 weeks just by that math yeah i'll only be losing a pound a week i don't think i can hold these eating habits out for that long and just lose hope so if you're struggling with this let me just catch 
majorly change your life. First of all, tracking your progress is phenomenal and I recommend you use MyFitnessPal for this and the way you track your progress is you weigh in every day after you wake up with no water or no food in your body because that is like your proper true weight because if you were just to drink a glass of water before weighing yourself in, it would affect your actual weight a lot. So you need to be tracking your weight every day and this will help you to also work out what works with your body and what doesn't work with your body. And also, when you'll be waking up every day seeing that you've lost weight, it's just very motivating and it's a very nice feeling. Tracking progress is very nice and I genuinely think it's required for changing your body. And I also took progress pictures because comparing your old and new self is very cool. Now, about motivation. Let's get this straight, okay? Hating yourself into working out does not work. Please, treat yourself with love. You might imagine losing weight like, ew, I'm so fat, nobody will ever love me. That's why I need to lose weight and then I'll be fucking everyone after I lose weight. Yeah. You see Stacy? Yeah, she'll be mine. I understand this might be caused by some previous trauma in your life, so it's essential to have a positive mindset and take it lightly. Don't beat yourself up for it. If you quote unquote mess up on your eating, I use the quote unquote because with the eating that I'm gonna tell you about, there isn't really any messing up you can do. So if you eat more than you should have, just take it lightly. It's whatever. Because stressing about it will only make you eat worse. And it's just worse for everything. Over the long run, you will still get your goals if you work towards them. Remember that eating well is not binary. It's not, yeah, I ate shit. I ate like two bad meals. Might as well say fuck it. Just throw the whole day over and eat like a ton. It's not binary. It's not yes or no. It's more of a percentage, you know? It's more of a scale. It's like, yeah, I ate well 80% of the time today. Instead of I ate well 0% of the time today because I've just been eating Dunkin' Donuts. And let me just give you another banger. Oh my god. You better drop that like like and subscribe because I'm just I'm just throwing I'm just throwing meat at you. Intermittent fasting is an absolute lifesaver and I don't think I could have lost that amount of weight in as little time as I did without it. Intermittent fasting is basically you giving yourself a time frame on when you can eat. More simply, skipping breakfast. And here's why intermittent fasting and eating healthy are an insane combination for losing fat. One is reducing calorie intake. Intermittent fasting can help reduce your overall calorie intake by limiting the amount of time you have to eat. So the model that most people do of intermittent fasting is 16 hours fast, aka no eating, and then you have an 8 hour eating window where you can just go ham. By eating healthy foods during your eating periods, you can further reduce your calorie intake and create a calorie deficit, which is necessary for fat loss. Second, intermittent fasting can improve your body's insulin sensitivity, which means that your body is better able to use insulin to regulate blood sugar levels. And I, I'm speaking like a nerd here, but this basically means that it can help you prevent the storage of excess fat and prevent promote fat burning. And also for some reason, intermittent fasting just feels fucking good. Like you will see for yourself, being fasted and being on an empty stomach feels amazing. It literally just sets you on fire somehow. It also boosts metabolism and combined with healthy eating, it's just gonna be insane. There are a billion other benefits to intermittent fasting that you will also get to enjoy, but they're not the current focus of the video, so just take them as a very nice bonus. You might be thinking, but Gatsu, won't I get hungry? Kinda. To not get hungry on your fast, you can just drink sparkling water or some black coffee and you won't get hungry until your eating window arrives. For sparkling water, I recommend you Georgian sparkling water because it's Georgian and I'm trying to get an award for raising this country's GDP. What kind of food can you eat during your eating window? Pretty much anything. I don't want you to restrict yourself on any foods because that just makes you feel like you're giving something up, which makes you want it even more. The trick here is to eat more healthy foods instead of decreasing the bad foods you eat. Because trust me, when you've eaten four fucking eggs with 200 grams of chicken bread, you feel so full you do not want any other food junk or healthy food you're like fuck this bruh i am good so by eating healthy food you decrease the amount of bad food in your body because you don't even want it and even if you did you're too full to eat them because that's what healthy food does and you don't need me to tell you what is healthy food and what isn't you already have common sense and know that eating shawarmas and turkish oily kebabs every meal is just not good for you the trick is to eat a lot of protein because yeah it helps you increase your muscle but it also fills you up like nothing else i was 83 kilograms aka 180 82 pounds and eating 200 grams of chicken breast fucking knocked me out you know how much 200 grams of chicken breast is 478 calories the chicken tasted good my ass was not hungry anymore so i just lost weight easily that also combined with one x 
exercise I absolutely loved to do and was vital to helping me lose my weight was the combo. Now to the exercise I was telling you about, walking. I know this is not as exciting as I hyped it up to be. I know you can't imagine Rocky's training montage where he's just walking, but anyone who's actually gotten in good shape can vouch for me here. <laughs> First of all, I know you motherfuckers stay in your homes, scrolling TikTok or Instagram reels all day. You all gotta go outside and breathe some fresh air. In today's age, a lot of people have either online jobs so they don't leave their homes, me, or they drive to work so they never get to walk, people in Canada and the United States. You might think running is a better exercise since it's literally walking but faster, but it's not. The beauty of walking as an exercise is it's super easy to do, you don't get tired, it reduces your stress because you finally get to breathe air outside and see the sun and one of the main benefits is you don't get hungry after it. You see, after a hard cardio exercise like running or swimming, people are hungry and a lot of the times they just eat back whatever they burned from the exercise. So this not happening during walking is very nice. Also, it burns a surprisingly high amount of calories. In an hour of walking, which is just one hour of being outside and exploring where you live, you burn up to 500 calories and that alone is enough to get you that one pound of fat loss a week these fitness youtubers were telling you about. The key to successful weight loss with walking is to make it regular and consistent and to get the most benefit aim for 30 to 60 minutes of walking per day, 5 days a week or maybe 7, just go outside bro. This can be broken up into smaller chunks of time if needed such as 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening and maybe like a 40 minute walk in between you know. I coupled that with the eating habits I talked to you about and lost 15 kilograms or around 33 pounds in a few months while gaining muscle and getting stronger. I only gain muscle because I'm still a beginner in the gym, so if you've been lifting for a few years, I cannot guarantee you'll also gain muscle. All I can guarantee is these habits will lead you to be happier and skinnier if your goal is to lose fat. At least you won't be needing any other advice with you will need to be in a caloric deficit. I can guarantee you most of the fitness people you see are on steroids. Steroids are a class of organic compounds that are used medically to treat various conditions such as inflammation inflammation, asthma and hormonal imbalances. If you're a pussy, gym people use it to turn themselves into giga chats. Steroids are popular among bodybuilders, athletes and fitness enthusiasts because they can increase their muscle size, strength and endurance. Also because the average person gains more muscle not working out but being on steroids than a natural person does working out. Steroid users often feel pressure to achieve an ideal physique and turn to steroids as a shortcut and steroids are way more common than you think. For example, a 2015 study found that more than half a million high school students had used anabolic steroids. Here's the study and you have to take into account this was before TikTok and lockdowns and mental issues. Now there are probably way more because it's way more normalized on TikTok and seeing these people in absolutely huge unachievable shapes makes more people want to be like them. It's literally impossible to look like this without steroids because it stretches your human limits. So these kids start doing steroids. No Norway, big man, big muscles. Same for Sweden. Did you know that they're the countries with the most steroid use in Europe? Sweden's percentage of steroid use was 4.4%. That's insane. And Norway's was 2.4%. Come on, bro. These statistics mean that steroid use is not just limited to elite athletes or professional bodybuilders, but it's also common among the general population of fitness enthusiasts and even teenagers who are insecure about their body. Brother, I promise you, she is not worth it. You do not have to hop on steroids just get lean and lift a little. You don't have to be Ronnie Coleman, I promise you. I say all this but you might not understand why I talk so much shit on this. You see, on YouTube you will see people that look like this, claim they are natural, which is just absolutely insane because no human can ever get that big without steroids and especially at that age. And you don't have to be huge to be on steroids. Like yeah, of course this man is on steroids, but could you have figured out that this man is on steroids too? Looks pretty natural, but no, he was getting some needles. And they all claim they're natural so they can sell more of their fitness products while giving people body dysmorphia, telling people they can achieve his physique naturally so he can sell even more products. Now you might think, Gatsu, why do you talk so badly about steroids? If they're all taking it, it can't be that bad. And I would agree with you. If I was an idiot, listen, you wanna lose your hair, 
Be my guest. You want to have acne? Be my guest. You want to damage your liver? Be my guest. Do you want to have horrendous psychological effects such as mood swings, aggression, and depression all day, every day, just to have unnaturally big muscles and look like a fucking horse? You tell me. Heart attacks are extremely common within steroid users because their heart cannot withstand everything the steroids are doing to their body. There's even a thing called roid rage where steroid users just go crazy and start being violent and aggressive. To be honest, if I see Ronnie Coleman being violent and aggressive anywhere near me, I'm getting out of there. Here are some things you can do other than steroids. Proper nutrition, adequate sleep, consistently training and increasing the weight. With lifting, I like doing between 4 to 8 reps with the highest weight I can handle. If I can handle 4 reps with this weight, I do them. This helps you get stronger and if you're a beginner, you will literally be hitting PRs every workout, personal records. Use the app Strong to track your workouts and the app literally tells you how far you are from reaching your PR. So if I can't PR every time I'm in the gym, I still do more volume than I did the last time. Preferably, I would just increase the overall volume of the workout by lifting heavier more. But some days you just can't do that. So I just lower the weight and the reps by the end of my sets uh, to still get an overall higher workout volume than the last time. Which is why I've gotten stronger than most male lifters while losing fat and gaining muscle. So yeah, TLDR, lift weights and walk a lot. But for bonuses, listen to your body because you know when you're full and gonna wake up heavier or lighter the next day. Drink black coffee or sparkling water when intermittent fasting. Don't beat yourself up and eat more healthy food instead of eating less bad food. So yeah, thanks for watching, like and subscribe and goodbye. Have you